Copilot is going to be coming to OneDrive for those users licensed with Copilot for Microsoft 365 in April. This follows on from OneDrive's big OneDrive 3.0 set of announcements last fall, and it's the start of us seeing the AI integration that was promised then. So let's take a look at what's coming when, what the features and limitations of this first release will be, and what they might mean to us in the wider context of the ongoing development of the Copilot product line. But before we dive in, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of small and medium-sized businesses. I share information here to help you navigate the artificial intelligence age with a particular focus on Microsoft 365 and Copilot. If you enjoy what you see here, then it would be great if you'd give the video a like to help it get in front of more people. And please subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to speed on topics such as this. If you're like me, then you probably have most of your files stored in OneDrive. But just because they're stored there doesn't mean you are accessing the OneDrive app, or perhaps better described as the OneDrive UI that exists on the web every day. I open files from my Office apps or from my synced OneDrive folder on my Windows PCs, and the default save location for all my files is OneDrive. But in all honesty, I only really open OneDrive on the web for specific edge use cases. I know though that there are increasing numbers of people, particularly those who didn't grow up on the Windows-based file and folder paradigm, for whom this web-based file access is just a normal part of their workflow. Drop me a comment down below to tell me how you use OneDrive. I'm interested to see just how many OneDrive users really do use the OneDrive web app regularly. The AI experiences we're talking about here are exclusively in the OneDrive web interface or OneDrive in Teams. So even though there has been talk of giving Windows a more integrated user experience for OneDrive that is more like the web, I wouldn't hold my breath for Copilot for OneDrive to make an appearance in your Windows File Explorer anytime soon, which in my opinion is a shame. In the OneDrive app on the web or the OneDrive experience in Teams, you're going to start to see a handful of new AI powered capabilities if you're a Copilot for Microsoft 365 licensed user. First, you'll be able to chat with Copilot about your content, much as you can with Microsoft 365 chat right now. The example given focuses on pulling sales numbers out of files in the chat and then continuing to ask questions about those responses. One question here that isn't answered by the demo videos or by the announcement blog post is what the scope of search for contextual information is. My assumption is that it's going to be the semantic index wide scope that we see in Microsoft 365 chat, giving it access to resources outside of OneDrive, such as emails or indexed items from third party sources if you've enabled graph connectors. However, that isn't clear here. And if that's not the case, and the scope is purely files in OneDrive, this feature could be problematic, as ensuring users understand those distinctions is going to be tough. Next, we see an example that I think is going to be a very valuable feature. The user selects a bunch of files and uses them as context data, driving the natural language request in Copilot. We could already do this with Microsoft 365 chat, but the interface to select files is not as clear as this, and the use case suggested of selecting a bunch of similar files to work through makes a lot of sense. However, it's unclear what the capacity limits on this would be, as I don't know if you've tried to hire lately, but the idea you just get four resumes rather than 40 or 400 seems a little far-fetched. And for the use case like this, unless it can work with a realistic scale, it's not going to be super useful. And other automated AI based processing is probably going to be more applicable. However, even if it cannot scale, I could see this as really useful for other types of work. For example, if you have multiple files related to a similar project or customer, this type of interface makes it far easier to ensure you're not missing anything in your context that you might miss inadvertently using the interface that we have elsewhere. I wonder if this capability will give us the ability to select folders as well as individual files. We'll have to wait to see. One of the things highlighted in the announcement is that Copilot in OneDrive can work with a wider range of files. 
This is great, but what's somewhat confusing is this list of file extensions is somewhat different than those that are listed as being indexed by the Copilot semantic index. So it's unclear what is going on here. Is the indexing going to change so more files are going to be available to Copilot generally, or is something else going on in OneDrive? Unfortunately, I can find no reference to explain this inconsistency, so if you know something I don't, please drop a comment below. Copilot in OneDrive is also stated as being available in the file viewer in Microsoft Teams, OneDrive and SharePoint, though it's not immediately clear whether other aspects of this experience will come to SharePoint at the same time. And frankly, if you've already been using Edge with Copilot or Windows Copilot, a very similar experience is already available to what's shown here. Although, one little easter egg that leads to a thousand questions is that the interface as shown also suggests you can open and reference different files in the context of viewing the one that's open. We'll need to wait to work out what possibilities this adds, as right now this is not something you can do in, for example, Word when asking questions of a document with Copilot. Last, and available starting this month, will be the ability to have Copilot add a file summary when you share a file. I can't say I have much experience of sharing files out of the blue with someone where they haven't already received context of why it's being shared from perhaps a meeting or an email, but I guess some people are looking for this? I imagine if the sender but not the receiver has a Copilot license, then perhaps this is a beneficial value add. Are you wanting to get more from AI as a business user, a business owner, or someone with responsibilities somewhere in between? Are you confused about what products you need, or how to implement them safely, or just why these AI tools work the way they do? It makes sense. This is a confusing time, with lots of change, and a completely new paradigm of work coming to the fore. But I can help. Start with my on-demand video course, Fly Into the Age of Copilots, available on my website, and for an introductory period, it's completely free. Learn the basics of the impact of AI on small and medium-sized businesses, and how to move forward safely. If you need more depth, consider my book, Who's in the Copilot Seat? A guidebook for small and medium-sized business leaders on the implementation of AI. And if you need support that's more customised to your needs, I offer a range of coaching, training and project services, from booking me for an hour of AI-focused business coaching to long-term adoption projects. Links for all these options are down below. The fact that this set of features get announced as a new Copilot in OneDrive, in my opinion, says more about how Microsoft organises its product development than about these features themselves. A more accurate telling of what's going on here, in my opinion, is that Microsoft is turning on a Microsoft 365 chat interface inside the OneDrive UI with a couple of extra bells and whistles driven by the unique properties of that view, as well as a couple of features turned off. This, in itself, in my opinion, is a far more exciting telling of this development, as it's my view that one of the foundational limitations of Copilot in apps like Word or PowerPoint is that when you open the Copilot interface panel, you don't get a full-featured Microsoft 365 chat experience that allows you to connect with any data inside Microsoft 365. You get an experience strictly limited by the context Microsoft thinks you should have. Imagine if when you had a presentation open in PowerPoint, you could, for example, prompt Copilot to add a slide based on what Megan said about project risks in our last project stakeholder meeting. This, in my experience, is how ideation and work iteration operates in most workplaces, and right now it's completely outside the bounds of Copilot's capabilities. If Copilot in OneDrive is going to start us down a path of more generally connected Copilot experiences across the app ecosystem, then that would be a major benefit for every user and completely remap the potential of Copilot to assist with a lot of high value work processes. It's also interesting to see in these demos what appears to be missing. For example, despite this being an experience sold around files, None of the Copilot responses we saw give you the ability to initiate the creation of a file. Going back to the first video demos of what Copilot would deliver from 12 months ago, we see the suggestion of taking Copilot responses and moving them to apps seamlessly, but this is still something that is generally lacking. I've actually seen this capability pop up for me exactly once when using Microsoft 365 chat, so it's in there somewhere, but just not generally turned on it seems. 
Why would you create a table of skills and experiences of people from their resumes as shown in these demos, for example, if not to put that information in an email or a spreadsheet or even a Microsoft list? This basic capability has existed in Copilot, the old Bing chat, for a long time and would be a massive upgrade across Copilot for Microsoft 365. Copilot for Microsoft 365 is an incredibly exciting set of products I use every day. I definitely gain back much more than the $30 cost of subscribing every month in added productivity through using these tools. And I believe that this is probably equally the case for pretty much any knowledge worker. But instead of having one clear approachable message around Copilot and its development, Microsoft continues to push messaging around a random collection of Copilots where it is very difficult to track what exactly is an idea, what is an announced upcoming feature, and what should now be turned on in the product. End users, administrators, and business decision makers need a consistent set of information in order to make decisions and do their work. And I think in the excitement of various product teams across Microsoft wanting to shout about the new features in their pet product, the reality that no one outside of Microsoft is thinking about these products in these highly separated ways is just being missed. I would hate to see confused communication have a negative impact on people's appetites for a great product, but I fear the complexity of trying to keep track of all this is taking a toll. Overall, Copilot for OneDrive is exciting, but also it creates a lot of questions. And does it need its own excited announcement outside of the context of just another Copilot for Microsoft 365 feature update? Absolutely not. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.